This is a Marimo notebook that is able to run a fast API app. It's a fun party trick, and there's a couple of things you gotta do to make it work smoothly, and there's also a couple of things to keep in the back of your mind if you're trying to do this. But the ability to really just write and declare a fast API app together with some other code that's nice and self-contained felt like an interesting enough topic to make a video about. So, in this video I'm gonna explain how all of this is set up, and I'm also going to explain a little caveat to always keep in the back of your mind if you're interested in doing something like this. Let's start with the basics. What are we looking at here? Well, we've got this cell on top that has a lot of these imports, and I'm declaring a fast API object over here. And I've also got this pydantic class, which I can go ahead and use to maybe define the JSON that I'm expecting on a certain route. So what you can see over here is I've got this uh, item pydantic object. I have this function over here called create item. This can uh, totally go in there. This is a type declaration. And this one function that's asynchronous, by the way, can be decorated with something like api.post and then with a route. And this is enough for FastAPI to understand that, hey, sometime later I might have an app that has a route and here's how to handle all of that. And it returns item back. It's not really doing anything with logic internally, but still uh, we have something over here. So for a Hello World app, this is sufficient, but there's one thing I do want to observe. And that is the fact that we still have access to this create item function over here. It's still async. The funny thing with that is it also means that we can run that function as we see fit. So if I were to scroll down over here, I can await this one function. And when I do, uh, the item that goes in is also the result that I get back out over here. And, you know, I can do uh, some extra things if I really wanted to. I could maybe uh, turn that into a dictionary and then, you know, I'll get something else out. In this case, you don't have to do that because FastAPI can handle the response appropriately. But I do hope that you're looking at this and think, oh, this is actually kind of neat. Not only are we able to define routes for FastAPI, we actually have functions that we could go ahead and use internally. So something about that feels kind of nice. Some something about that feels very multi-purpose. However, in order to get this to run, there is this extra step that you do have to take into consideration. For starters, notice this first cell on top over here. This is a setup cell. And you can look at that as a cell that really has to run first. This one cell contains all sorts of dependencies for functions that we would maybe want to use later. And one of these functions is declared in here. This is a reusable function. Now, the reason that we're being somewhat formal here is related to the fact that by having a reusable function, you are also able to import this function in another Python file. And to maybe explain that, let's have a look at what the file actually looks like under the hood. So this is the Python file in question. It really is just a Python file. There are some dependencies that are commented in like this. So that's something that UV could use. I import Marimo. I generate a Marimo app. And from there, I have cell definitions. Normally, a cell would look something like this. There's a function that's being decorated with this cell decorator that's attached to this app. And that's great for normal cells that you want to run in a notebook. But if you want to have a function that's importable, then we cannot really use this cell decorator anymore. So what Marimo does internally is it just adds this app.function decorator instead. Marimo can still use everything that's defined in here as a cell. But by doing this, you are also able to import this function from another Python process or another Python file or whatnot. However, this one function will also have some dependencies. Uh, in particular, we have this item that we need, right? And that's what this setup cell is for. The main difference here, by the way, is that we have this context manager. And also note that this isn't code that you have to write yourself. This isn't something you would manually touch. This is something that Marimo handles for you, but you are able to put all of your global imports in here, and then this would be available when it's needed. So in summary, I have a setup cell over here. That setup cell internally is represented with this context manager, and this allows me to have dependencies that are globally available. And then if I have a single cell in Marimo that just has a single function definition, then that becomes a reusable cell. It is detected as a function that I might want to import later. And internally, Marimo deals with that by adding this app.function decorator instead of this normal app.cell decorator. And from here, what I can do is I can use the fast API run command from the command line to point to this fast demo.python file. And when I run it, it starts up a local server that I can go ahead and access. And if I were to check the docs, then I can totally see this items endpoint that I added. So definitely I'm dealing with a fast API app here. Just like normal, you can also see the Pydantic schema here. So all this stuff is pretty familiar. Now, although you do have to take a little bit of care in how you set up your Marimo notebook, one thing that is very cool is that you're able to declare functions that you can just use as normal inside of a notebook, and you can also reuse them inside of FastAPI that you could actually deploy. 
So that combination definitely feels nice, but there is a downside of the current setup that we should be honest and upfront about, and we have to talk a little bit about some more advanced features of Fast API and how they might not work with this approach. If I have a look at this one definition of a route, let's say, this one post request, then I hope you agree it's a relatively simple implementation. And it's not just because this function isn't doing anything internally, it's mostly because the type definition here is relatively simple. You can really get expressive inside a fast API because you can deal with annotated types here, for example. And here's an example of that. In this particular case, I have a get request. I have a function called read items, and there's some sort of a dictionary called commons that is supposed to go in. Now notice that this dictionary is technically a type definition, but fast API allows you to annotate the type definition for some extra behavior. And in this particular case, I'm saying, look, I'm expecting a dictionary to go in, but using this depends class that you can import from fast API, you can also pass a function. And in this particular case, what that's going to do is it's going to say, well, I expect a dictionary to go in, but even if that dictionary doesn't have a skip parameter or a limit parameter or a queue parameter around, this common parameters function is basically going to give it some default values, you could say. However, notice how a lot of that type information is really just completely lost if you're going to call functions like this directly. If I were to just pass a list with just a single string in here, hello, then that gets returned. So sure, you could say that it's doing what's defined over here, but you can also really just tell that it's ignoring all of this type information. And the reason for that is because a request actually has to come in and go through and get handled by this route. And all of that is basically being skipped by calling it directly like so. So if you are actually interested in pretending like you're talking to an actual fast API server from within an actual notebook, then maybe calling the original function isn't the way to do it. Your best bet instead might be to use the testing client. One of the really cool features of fast API is that you can take your API variable that defines your server, so to say, and you can turn that into a test client. A test client then can really mock a request. So you could say, hey, test client, let's just do a get request to the stuff endpoint and then get the JSON out of that. And when I do that, then you can see that those default parameters that I mentioned earlier, that those actually get passed along properly. So even though you can't totally run a fast API app from a remo because under the hood, it's all just a Python file. If you are going to be interested in mimicking what it's really like to communicate with that server, then I recommend not using those functions directly. It's a lot safer to use the test client instead. But that said, it could be that there are a few of these moments when you really enjoy debugging from inside of a notebook environment and you still wanna have that one environment maybe also contain a little web app. And if that's something you're interested in doing, you can totally do that with Marimo. And that could be fun to experiment with.